Good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever the case may be. This is GoneWithTheWind.com. My name is Leo, and today we're looking at Sub-Level Zero, a Descent-style game that is launching today on Steam. Now, you may ask, why do I want to play another Descent game? I mean, Descent is from 1994, 20 years ago. Well, the reason is because this one is pretty awesome. Um... Looking through the settings, I'm just cranking up the lighting, the draw distance to look as nice as possible. It has a retro look to it, but it's running on a much more advanced engine, the Unity engine, so it looks a lot nicer. To answer the previous question as to why would you want to play Descent again, it's because this is much more than Descent ever was. They've added a roguelike uh, mixture to it, they've added weapon crafting, they've added permadeath and a random gen generated level system and enemy placement system so that each playthrough is different. The story goes like this. No one remembers what happened or why, but solar systems started to vanish. They were destroyed and reappearing light years away, if at all. Uh, wormholes were appearing and disappearing. Basically, the, so the entire galaxy is in chaos. Humans were scattered, strewn, strewn amongst the stars. They began to form disparaged clans and they've forgotten the majority of their science technology. Those that were scattered around were now in lawless systems. However, you come across this station and your clan sends you for a closer look, hoping to find technology that could explain what happened or how to reverse it. As you approach the station hidden in the asteroid belt, uh, you see that it was being attacked by some ion storms or plasma storms, I'm not sure what, but before you can investigate any further you realize that the facility is the cause of the storms and you are sucked inside and you begin guess where sub level zero now if you take a look at the graphics the textures anyway you'll see that it does have a an older look the the classic uh, look but it's much more polished and the dynamic lighting really shows through and gives it a much more modern futuristic feel to it you know, it almost has to blend together. It does not look like an old game. It doesn't feel like an old game. It actually feels very smooth, very fun to play. Um, the tutorials explaining some of the piloting controls, the boosting, and I found it much easier to pilot around in uh, using a controller versus the keyboard because I'm kind of I feel like I guess I'm in a ship, so I'm not in first-person shooter mode necessarily. Here's the crafting system. Uh, the weapons you can find. You can equip them anywhere you want. Um, there's two slots for direct fire, two for projectile, like missiles, an engine, and a hull. Each system that you find takes up two slots in inventory. You only have 12. Even repair systems, which you control your health, they take up one slot. So you have to be very shrewd and plan out what you want to keep, what you want to leave behind, because space is limited. All right, here is one of the repair kits, and once you find the first one, it starts to initiate. You look at the plus line at the top of the HUD, you'll see that I have one saved up. My health is maxed up, so I'm not going to use it. The tutorial, though, is set up for keyboard and mouse. It does not intuitively tell you which button is what if you're using a controller. It's kind of disappointing. Small gripe, but... Um, Nonetheless, maybe something can be patched in later. Who knows? This is pretty basic. When you're playing this, I mean, you cannot help but compare it at the scent. It's pretty much the same. The, the view, the uh, enemies can be hiding underneath a corner, above you, behind, you know, in the diagonal area. And the controls are very smooth. Combat becomes a kind of a tense affair because remember this is permadeath so you're trying to make it through all six levels on one life trying to manage your repair kits like this guy here just sneaks up on you there's enemies everywhere and the AI in this game is actually pretty good this data log kind of explains what was going off going on before I guess humanity abandoned this station with the staff it's little hints and tidbits of what was going on they're scattered throughout the levels now they're they're kind of random in order just like the levels themselves are random, so you kind of read them all and you get a little picture of what was happening on this station. Alright, trying to take a look. 
So the roguelike, every level is different. The permadeath has you, or had me anyway, very tense, trying to make sure I didn't waste my health, didn't have to use a repair kit, trying to make the enemies come at me, but they all have different movements. Like you see these little orange guys, they will charge you. The little circle guys, they move slow, throwing plasma charges at you. Oh, that one just came from behind me, so there must be, yep, there he is, snuck up behind me. This is the first sub-level, so they are kind of easy. And as you progress, they become harder and harder. Their weapons change from just simple plasma to homing missiles. They charge at you much faster, they take a lot more damage. Also, when you're in your crafting menu, they can sneak up and shoot you, so you gotta make sure that the coast is definitely clear before you sit back and start changing out weapons. Ah, right there, right at the top. I ended up just sitting around, couldn't make up my mind half the time which weapons I wanted to take. I can only take 12 slots. Should I take, you know, two or three older weapons and try to craft them into something better? Do I just drop them all and keep as many repair kits as possible? Do I want this missile or that one? I mean, the, the possibilities seem to be endless. I've gone through games where I have not been able to craft my favorite weapons. I tend to favor the sniper style weapons and just sometimes they do not land. They do not drop, so I've had to adapt. And um, that adds a very cool... Okay, some repair kits. That adds a very cool random element to every single playthrough. They never... Not only does it not play the same because the levels are different, but you're also forced to adapt to whatever weapons you have available. I've run out of energy, I've run out of bullets, I've run out of missiles entirely for, for long, long stretches of the game, and just had to keep adapting, uh, keep trying to get these enemies to fit to my new weapon playstyle. Adds a nice dynamic to this game. Now here we are in this big open chamber, there's multiple enemies coming at me. Some, some need to eat whistles, I just blew one up with my my missile. Wait, this is not a regular team. This is a core. Okay. Cores are what you're after. And they're usually protected by those cool looking force fields. Here we'll find some extra weapon drops. Extra enemies too that want to fry my butt. But we're not going to let them, are we? Nah. Okay. Going to check the other side just for just to make sure there's usually extra items around here. Once we get inside the core, uh, it's usually stockpiled with weapons, uh, with enemies, I'm sorry, and they always usually drop something good. Uh, it gets a little hard. I want these bastards to come out to me. Don't want to jump my jump in there, they'll shred me. I already see a weapon drop, but I'm just trying not to get smoked by all these plasma shots. All right. What do we got here? Useless auto cannon? No. There you get a message though that says new crafting available. That I do like. So when you find a few new things, we've got a savage flamethrower, a useless auto cannon. We can equip it as is, or we can see what we can make. Now it says here that the pulsar and the useless auto cannon can make a slow minigun or a clumsy minigun if I use the other two. So not sure which one you want. I went with the slow minigun, it just depends on your playstyle. Only because I tend to favor damage over rate of fire. And I'd rather not use two bullet type weapons because if I run out of bullets then I you're you're screwed. So I'm gonna try to use the energy based savage flamethrower along with the minigun. Throughout a standard engine I don't need anymore, and let's burn this core. Now this core is easy, they get harder as the game progresses. And just because of balancing and what I've been able to find, sometimes even the lower levels just kick my butt, while sometimes I end up looking out, having better weapons, and I make it further. Alright, let's go into the portal now that we've blown up the core, and go to the next level. Alright, here's the cool thing about this game too. If you gather enough nanites, you will be able to take a one-time boost. It's random. This one 
lets me pick up more nanites for, I guess, better crafting of weapons. An advanced missile regeneration, which I don't even have any right now, so I'm not going to bother with it. Or increased rate of fire with less accuracy. So I'm going to take the more nanites. Don't like less accuracy, not when you're playing a Twitch shooter. So let's try sub-level 1. Here's where things get a little harder. I have my flamethrower, my dumb fire missiles, and I'm charging right in. Looks like we got we're falling right in. Don't like the flamethrower. We'll have to change that out later. Instead we got a marksman shredder. Some of the if you pick up a bulleted weapon that's better than what you have, it usually auto switches you out. It switched out my riot auto cannon for this shredder. Now shredders are shotguns, essentially. Marksman Shredder just has better accuracy, I suppose. Like how the weapons have a definitive pack punch, you know, like the shotguns, boom, wow, that one's nice. Just knocks them back. Missiles blow up and knock things around. Laser beams also punch things to a stop. You know, I just rammed them just to, because I, I need to get out of this corridor. Ramming is effective, it does cause damage, but if they're shooting at you, you will eat their bullets. So use wisely. Next chamber, I like to peek. Say hello with a barrage of shots. Oh, that's just nice. They're just blowing up right away. That will change the further we get into the game. Some of the more advanced enemies they are much more armored or they move a lot faster just making them harder to destroy these little guys though they don't seem to agree with my new shotgun which I'm starting to like gotta always keep an eye on your ammo I am not very high on regular fire missiles I'm halfway through my my bullets don't want to switch to flamethrower and there is where the catch-22 begins do I switch to the flamethrower now how soon should I switch to an energy weapon I don't like to carry two of any kind for that reason like I mentioned you will run out of ammo quickly and be stuck at some place crucial without the weapon or weapon uh, and ammo that you need but we just picked up a whole bunch more bullets so we're, we're pretty good All right, that little loop went nowhere Check the map. Here's our way out. Even though this is procedural, I have not seen really strange uh, room designs or, or tunnels that lead nowhere often where you're just, you know, going crazy trying to figure out where to go next. This is pretty well done. The even though it's procedural and it's different every time, it's not. Uh, the routine must be very well balanced, it doesn't get out of hand. I, I thought they were. Sometimes there's flamethrower and laser type defenses. I, I just thought that was going to be one of them, but it's not. Alright, looks like we're pulling into a, an asteroid or rocky terrain. Usually there's a lot more. Uh, here we are, there's a bunch. Enemies mixed together, different types of enemies. These little guys, they just charge you, just blindly shooting at you, and sometimes it's effective, especially in close quarters. These blue guys will start replacing the the other uh, octagon, I'm not octagon, hexagon kind of guys. The, uh, this is these little guys are cool. I noticed these are like the snipers. They take one good shot at you and then they just run. Look at him. He runs and he hides. He'll just sit there and hide and then come back out and get you. So all these little routines running together keep combat very very interesting. Later on, you'll have tanks. You'll have uh, rammers, you'll just all kinds of different type of, I guess, enemy personalities start to show up, and it becomes a balancing act of charging in, dodging, running away, and conserving your ammunition. All right, I'm seeing one of the rammer guys. There was, there he goes. He just swings by you, he turns around, charges you again. Guys are so 
annoying. There's two of them, now they're crisscrossing and just diving at me. While Mr. Sniper is just trying to take a shot at me. Now the repair kits, when they're activated, I'm activating one now, will heal you up slowly. It takes a few seconds. If you're trying to heal up in the middle of combat though, and there's just you just can't charge in even if you have 10 of them, it takes a while for it to charge up 25, 30 hit points. So in the middle of combat, it's not a good idea to just start cranking up uh, repairs. You might need it, but it might be easier for you to just retire, hang back, fix yourself up and then go into the next area. I'm loving this shotgun. Just that little punch that it gives and spins out the enemies is kind of cool. Oh. Yeah, so they blow up too close to you. Relentless hurl. I've never seen this weapon before at all. If they blow up too close to you, your ship will take damage. Oh, it already equipped it. Relentless HVRL. Something looks like Hurl. Not sure what it does. We'll find out. I've done about six playthroughs, and this is the first time I've seen some of these weapons, so I'm just checking out the stats. That's pretty impressive that I think I played one playthrough where I just kept finding lasers and rifles, so it was more like a, what I like, a sniper fest, energy rifles, laser beams. Um... And it was the kind of playthrough where I constantly kept trying to keep guys from, or these drones from getting too close to me so I can use my sniper weapons. We're here with a shotgun and a flamethrower. I'm trying to force myself closer to everybody. That's what I have. That's all I have to work with. Um, took me out of my comfort zone, but that's what I like about this game. You just don't know. You just don't know, man. You just don't know. Alright, let's just... Uh, Sniper guy, oh, this guy, they just they just charge out of nowhere. You gotta be careful. But I love that. It's like a fast firing missile. They, the ammo is called darts, so usually those are smaller, do less damage, but you could fire a bunch of them off at once. Oh, this guy's pushing me back all the way. I'm going back all the way into the tunnel. That gets really annoying when you have those defenses, the turrets, the flamethrowers behind you, and he's just, or lava, and he's just ramming you into the. It's. A little more challenging than just than what you're seeing. All right, I can combine those to make a rapid homing swarm. I've gotten this before. It's actually a pretty cool weapon. It does as much damage as firing five or six of the the HVRLs together, and it homes. As you can see, these little octagon guys are changing. Now they're firing more. Sniper guy, always trying to sneak up on you. They the the more advanced into the level, they change their movement patterns, their firing patterns, so you have to adapt the end. Where are these baddies? This chamber here, though, is a perfect example of how this is procedurally generated, but it seems almost like it was designed. The way these guys are layered together, you got these fast firing blue guys, the little sniper guys taking the pot shots at you. You got the rammer guys constantly charging at you. Uh, it creates a pretty intense combat arena, and you're always trying to balance out between you know the different types of enemies. Try not to get your butt burned while at the same time laying waste to all of them. But since they move differently, it gets a little challenging. Like I just these double rammed by these uh, red ships. The the. I've almost killed me a few times already, just the way that they kind of overlap. After the guy, after they knock me over, then the blue guys come and they start pounding me with plasma shots. Oh, I'm almost dead again. Good thing I have plenty of repair kits. Repair kits do not save you from everything though, because they're just, if, you, if you're getting hit in combat and you hit repair kit, it's not going to instantly give you health. You have to wait a little while. So definitely heal up as much as possible before hitting the next, or the next area. There you go. I know you're going to show up and say hi. Oh, all right, good. Almost took a bunch of unnecessary damage. You would have charged me in that close vicinity. See you later, sniper guy. See you later, flamethrower dude. Oh, another one. 
There's no room in here either, so it's a little harder to dodge. Got him too. Another repair kit to keep healing. I'm doing good with the repair kits this time. Let's open this box, see what's in here. Okay, darts, missiles, and nanites. Love those homing missiles. Nothing says I love you like homing missiles. Blue door could be the core, could be a guarded area. Gonna go in cautiously just in case. All right, got a couple. These missile platforms, they take a lot of damage and they will dish out a lot of damage, but they don't really move too much. So that's use that to your advantage. A couple of missiles and a couple of shotgun sprays will usually do the trick. Let's see what we got here. What's the weapon? Is this rapid hurl? I already got that. Force field. We're at the core. So we're getting to the end of this level. Did not find the energy rifle or some of the energy weapons that I prefer to use, but we'll make do. Razor laser. Might have to do with that instead of the flamethrower. These little tank guys are cool. They just kind of crawl out. They stick to any surface and they'll just roll out anywhere and just start pounding you in the back or just front barrage. They take a decent amount of damage, but just another enemy variety that keeps things interesting. Now, as we get close to the end of this level, this will be the last level that I will play with you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. As you can see, it's descent like, rogue like. But all its own, it feels new, it feels like like I'm playing a brand new game. I have gone through about six or seven playthroughs. Uh, glued to my seat. I, I, I just find the, the, the multiple layers of strategy and the decision making and the constant, oh, should I take this, should I drop that, makes this game really interesting. And I could easily see someone getting, you know, 30, 40, 50 hours out of this game, but technically unlimited. And for the price, I mean, I, I just saw the news uh, posted on Steam. It's going to debut for under 15 bucks. I think. And on sale too when it first starts. So I mean, the value in this is ridiculous. The fun that you that I was having with it is, is impressive. I highly recommend it. And for for an indie developer, for their first, uh, I guess, descent style game, and this is pretty this is pretty good. Good stuff here. I have a little trouble with all the enemies, but this chamber is again. A mixture of different types of enemies and they're pounding you in the butt and rolling around trying to dodge and shoot at the same time it's not easy these red guys are really aggressive very aggressive I think we got them all I need to sit back and figure out which weapon I'm using in the core as you'll see this core gets a little more Intense than the first one that we saw. I'm trying to heal up. Slow grenade. I'm not sure I want that. Okay. One last reconfiguration. Concussion missiles, which I don't have any ammo, but let's hope we don't need it. I want to thank everyone for joining us as we took a look at sub-level zero. In case you missed it, it is launching today on Steam. And if you would like a more detailed review, I know I do, I, I prefer usually reading it before I watch it, visit us at www.gonewiththewind.com for the full review. I am hoping that I can beat this last core, but it doesn't look too good. I don't think I'm doing enough damage with my shredder. No! Ah. But thank you for joining us. This game's been fun. It's been fun playing it with you. Hope you enjoy it, and if you have any questions, always drop us a message on the forum, or send us a tweet. Have a good day, have a good night, whatever the case may be.